Hello, we are the Salon Sleuths. My name is Melissa. And my name is Leslie. And we are two women from the Pacific Northwest. We are both curious about paranormals, spirit guides, ghosts, past lives. We are suspicious about true crime, disappearances, and strange phenomenons. We are open to learning about the supernatural and all things we don't understand. Together, we're opinionated with a splash of smartass. Join us to learn and stay curious, stay suspicious, and stay open. Follow Salon Sluice on all major podcast platforms. Hello, today I'm going to be talking to you about the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. Many of you know the story as the Delphi murders, and I'm just going to do a quick overview only because this case has been um, out in the media for a long, well, since it happened in 2017, and um, most of you are familiar. If you're not, this is just going to be a quick overview. Um, I was contacted by a gentleman who believes that his father was the Delphi murderer, and I want to give him a voice. He, His father is not one of the ones that are listed as per- persons of interest. I just wanted you guys to hear what he has to say. I don't know why anybody would claim this unless it was true or unless they really believed it to be true. So I wanted to give them this um, man, Sean, a voice. So um, the story is on February 13th. This was a Monday at 1.35. Abigail and Liberty went for a hike. The older sister of Libby, which is Li- Liberty, which is Libby, um, the older sister, Kelsey, dropped them off at the road, um, the country road 300 north on Hosier Heartland Highway. And the girls went hiking on the Monon High Bridge over Deer Creek. Now at about 2.07, Libby posted a picture of Abby walking across the bridge, and this was the last time the girls were heard of, heard from. Liberty's father was going to be picking them up at 3.15, and the girls failed to show up. And um, he waited a little bit. They started to look around. They ended up filing a missing persons report about 5.30, where police came in and they took a look. They didn't really worry too much about them. They thought they would show up. And by evening, it was clear that they weren't going to. Now, I read this somewhere, and I don't know exactly where I saw this, but um, I was, I read, I believe, that um, one of the girls' phones pinged at 2.30 in the morning, which then um, the police went back out to the bridge to try to find them, and they were not successful. And it looks like at noon the following day, which would have been Valentine's Day 2017, the girls' bodies were found a half a mile from the abandoned Monon High Bridge, um, and they were on the north bank of Deer Creek. Now, um, it appears um, that they were able to find the phone, at least one of them from the girls, and um, they're on the phone. It, there's a video of a man who was pictured on the bridge with these girls and um, there's a short video Um, I think the uh, police have uh, posted just stills of this man and there's also an audio clip and you hear the man say down the hill and that is the last um, thing that they know about this person and so right now that man on the bridge is the person of interest and they are looking for anybody who recognizes him or recognizes the voice which, by the way, this man who has contacted me claims both of those things, that he knew that voice the minute he heard it, and he also recognized him as having those items that you've seen in the picture. So I wanted to give um, some insight for that. There were a few people that were listed as persons of interest. However, this man that is claiming it's his father is not on this list. And I don't know why, or or maybe, I mean, I have no idea where they stand on any of this, but um, the persons of interest so far have been Paul Etter, Daniel Nations, Thomas Bruce, Charles Eldridge, and James Brian Chadwell. Those are the people who have been listed as persons of interest. I believe at least one of them has passed away um, due to suicide, and that would be Paul Etter. I am not certain about the others, but today I do want to be talking to you um, with Sean Harmon, who wants to be talking about his father. 
Before we get into Sean's interview, I did call my friend Jeanette Lucas, who happens to be a psychic medium. She helps people find missing people, missing objects. So I called her while I was waiting to get a hold of Sean, and I just gave her some information, and this is what she had come up with. You're on my uh you're on my podcast. I'm recording you on my podcast right now. What did you say that the impression you got when I gave you? Okay, so the first thing I saw was a woman and I see down. So down is normally meaning not north, not west, not east, but south. So that means they're gonna go south. And then it also shows a woman who has I wanna lean toward the word criminal intent or manipulation. And she was going astray because of a, a woman and you, you have to look at it like okay so what's the next question there so from indiana I, and i just heard the word south bend. it could be in south bend <clears throat> do you know what part of indiana um uh not exactly i am about to get on the phone with him to get more information Who's him? The guy, the husband? The so, so the one I'm going to be interviewing, his name is Sean Harmon, and his father is Dennis. Okay. And I was just wondering, um, I'm going to be interviewing Sean, and I was just wondering if, if I gave you those names, if you had any anything that came to you when, because you're psychic, I thought maybe if you had something that came to your mind when you when I gave you those names normally when I see some kind of weird uh criminal intent or manipulation it's something very convoluted so that means somebody's lying <laughs> somebody else is lying and somebody's lying to hide the truth okay so um so are you talking to the father Sean the father this is the son <clears throat> And the father is, I'm sorry, I'm driving, so I have okay. to rethink the whole thing. And the father is Dennis. Okay, so the, the father, Dennis, is the one acting weird? Um, well, the son believes the father has committed a heinous crime involving two young girls. Okay, were they blonde? Um, I don't, I would have to go back and look, but um, interesting enough, there was a recording of this man with these girls and he says down the hill and you said down. So I didn't know if that was connected or if that was literal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the key factor is the son is very suspicious, but here's the thing. How old is the son? Um, the son is probably in his. So is he, is he thinking cold case? Um, it's not cold. It's just, um, let me try to figure out when this actually happened really quick. This all happened in 2017. So it's kind of cold. So you're not talking about those two girls with, with those two teenagers, were you? Yeah. So this so guy believes, the guy believes, this guy I'm about to interview believes his father is the murderer of those two girls. Well, after the visions I just got, it's, he's not alone, if that makes sense, or there's something going on with him and another woman. So I'm um, asked, where's the mom? Um, I don't believe they've been together for a very long time. <clears throat> Ask if he's got a girlfriend. Okay. That situation is very important. It could be, um, I was reading up on the cop who raped women in California. Yeah. And he raped and murdered them is he blamed his ex-girlfriend for not wanting sex <laughs> okay and he he actually when he was raping them he would call them the name so, so let's say the the girl's name was denise so he would say i hate you denise i hate you right okay you weren't coming to yeah and they just can't shut their their pie hole <laughs> they just can't you know, do you think like did you get a hit from the son or from the father no there's no there's no framing there's some kind of criminal intent going on here okay um and it could be he's mad at his ex-wife it could be he's mad at his ex-girlfriend and he sees it sees the crime of opportunity it could be they have the same hair coloring or the same look so you need to see what does the mom look like and what do the girls do the girls resemble a girlfriend of his the father's do i feel like he's setting him up i'm gonna say no okay 
Okay, and then all you have to do is ask Sean, you know, again, who will win more house? Okay, so how far away did the father live from the crime scene? Well, I'm, I would, I was just trying to see if he is of right mind first, like, cause he's yeah. all over the place. His Facebook page is kind of scary. It's all over. And yeah, I just, it could, it, yeah, it could be Sean. Um, first I want you to find out if Sean is just so scared, you know, what made him come forward? Okay. And then I'm going to ask you to find well, this is what he said. He said as soon as he saw that video and that he heard that man's voice, he knew it was his dad. And he has not been in contact with his dad for a very long time. So he doesn't, okay. yeah. Okay, so the second thing is, um, all right, so we know why he, okay, so you need to ask him, do you feel safe? Okay. Because okay. you want to tell him, with me, you are safe. Okay. I want you to relax. I know it's hard to deal with. Um, whether it's true or not, I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to be there for you. And, um, yeah, I, I would call the cops. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's see how Sean talks. Okay. And, um, but I'm trying to pick up on Sean. Sean is being shown wearing a, uh, a black knit, which means a uh, fear factor. Um, you know what? Ask Sean if he has any other siblings that think that that's their dad too. Okay. Or any co or any cousins, or does dad have a relative that recognizes that articulation? Okay. Because you can break it down. You know. What yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, and I do know a, a guy who's a PI who could possibly get involved and help out. He's retired. Well, this but guy he's very friend. active, like all over, trying to. I mean, he's not quiet about naming his dad as this thing and um so i was like the yeah, police have had to have looked into him or they just don't think that sean's credible because he's all over the place and kind of crazy well there's several factors sean could be a druggie and he is taking more drugs to deal with it because he's freaked out about it i mean you're talking murder yeah you're talking children It just makes you want to puke. Yeah. I mean, murdering itself is bad enough, but when you say, oh, he raped and murdered these girls, yeah. you hang in there and let's see what happens. Okay. All yeah. right. I mean, yeah, go, go interview Sean. Let me know if you need me, call me. Okay. All right. Or touch me too, like whatever you need. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. So before um, I waste any more time, we're going to go straight to that interview. Thank you. Can you see me? I can see you. All right. What's your name? I'm Leslie. Leslie Sean. Yes. Hi, Sean. Nice to meet you. You too. And uh, so who's this other phone number you gave me? That's my friend Nancy that I live with. Does she want to join us with, from her phone? Um, to watch or to talk? Either one. <laughs> oh, she she can watch from her phone if she wants. Yeah. So how does she do that? Um, so I texted her the link and all she has to do is click on it and then I'll accept her to come in. Okay. So is this we, the house that you're staying at her house with her? Well, I, I, I got my own place, but I, uh, I stay here to, you know, calm down and stay out of the mix, you know, of everything. If I'm by myself, it gets to me about all the, a lot to go through with all this, you know? Do you have your own place? Yes. Okay. But it, you feel like there's a lot of stress over there. So you'd like to hang out with Nancy? Well, I, I, I do come over here so I can, you know, um, have someone to talk to about this, you know, someone okay. close, you know, that way I ain't sitting by myself. I was homeless for 13 years. So it's like, yeah. I, I'm just now this past year, whenever I found this out, I just started, you know, getting things together and opening up again, because when you're homeless, it's like, you don't want to be around people, but you are, you know, and you just yeah. kind of break down. Yeah. Well, you're all clean and sober now, right? Yeah. Well, I smoke weed. Okay. Well, um, everybody that, does, but that, I want to say yeah. that I'm proud of you. That's a huge step. And that's, I think, um, it's probably led to you actually getting your new place and, you know, moving on with your life. And I always say like what you've dealt with in the past 
has been very hard, but it doesn't define who you are as a person. And from this day forward, you're, you are just plugging away, becoming a better person. So thank you yeah, for being on the victim. show. No, thank you. Well, you know, same with me, like I grew up in this crazy world and I think I spent a lot of my time blaming my parents when honestly, um, I'm in charge of who I am as a person and it would be easy to blame somebody else for all my mistakes and everything, but ultimately it was me that made those choices. So now it's like, okay, moving on, like, what do I do from here? So, um, and I know that I watched the other podcast or a majority of the other podcasts and he really went into your past and I think Anthony he was, Green now. um, I think it was the one that you posted on your, uh, YouTube page and it was like over an hour long. It was pretty long, but he yeah, really went Anthony. into your past and I realized that is important, but I also don't know if it's, um, super important to what your message is and what you're trying to tell people. And um, I think the biggest part was he tried to like trip you up and try to um, catch you in lies. And the one thing that you never did was lie and that yeah. you were very honest with him. And even when he tried to, it didn't, he, you, you stuck to the truth. And that's one thing that I noticed in that interview. And so, and the other thing that really stuck out to me is um, he said, like, when did you realize that this person in the video or the, the photo was your dad. And you said, because I recognize him and I heard his voice and you knew at that moment that that was your father. Yeah. And so to me, that's very telling. And it's hard to tell from that picture, how old that person actually is, but like describe to me when you first saw it, what did you see about that picture? Other than like, I guess if I see a picture of my dad, I just know it's my dad, but were there anything specifically about that picture that you knew that you can tell me that was your dad for sure? Well, what had happened is uh, I got clean and sober last February and then um, it was on February the 6th. And then this February the 3rd, I had um, been talking to my friend, Nancy, um, that helped me get off the street, you know, let me come and, you know, take showers, do my clothes. I'm just doing a little quick back. Um, and she had, let me, you know, come here after rehab last year. And so last summer I was going through trying to get a hold of my son, which is the younger composite sketch. And uh, I went through Dennis's Facebook page because he's passed away now. Bridge guy's dead. He, he died May the 13th, oh. 2021. Okay. Dennis Rock Carmen. And So that um, was your father. He's already passed away. Yeah. Bridge guy. Okay. If, if what they're saying about the person on the bridge and the voice, then that's Dennis. I know he's the one that's on the bridge. Okay. And I had seen his post and, and just passed over his, his post and stuff. And I'd seen things about little kids missing, like the girls, but I didn't pay no attention last summer. And so I just, you know, and I tried getting with my son and then right before I found, found us out in like November, he said, well, you got to get a drug test, you know, cause he, Dennis raised my son, you know, and got, my son away from me, you know, with the welfare, because I talked about the welfare and the people he knows. And, um, so this, this year I got my, um, dog's ashes that I was homeless with finally back. And then right after that, the year was going good. And then I found this out February mm -hmm. the 3rd and I was going to try to get a hold of my dad and say, Hey, I want to speak to my son. I, I mean, you know, you put me through hell and abused and kidnapped us as a kid. I got pictures of black guys on my Facebook and I've sent you, you know, um, it's, and I saw the video and Nancy had said something about last year, whenever I had gotten off the street and off of heroin for 13 years, you know, and off of heroin for six, I didn't start doing deep drugs until 32, I think when my son turned 18. I had waited for that day and been homeless for year, four or five years before that. And I tried committing suicide and went to stay with him. And Dennis, you know, I told his wife that, you know, he molested my sister and abused us. And she said, I didn't know what I had until I, you know, got him home. The monster, you know, basically is what she said. And then two days later, Dennis tried taking me out, shooting a gun. Within a week, I was dropped off, you know, but I, I said, I don't want to go out and shoot the gun. And um, because Dylan walked out at the right time, you know, maybe because he's deadly, but I ain't afraid of him. But anyway, he wanted me to start get. he's been wanting me for years to get my mail to stop coming from his house. But whenever I'm homeless, I have nowhere for it to go. So right. it, just like this white bandana, he don't like me wearing a white bandana. So I would do it on purpose. 
and I seen the video again, you know, and I was trying to get to him because Dylan text saying you got to get drug tested before I'm gonna have anything to do with you. I'm 46 years old. You're 24. You don't tell me what to do. And I kind of, yeah. you know, got a little ticked off. And then, so it made me start looking into what really Dennis does and posts. And I seen that he was a military police officer and that he worked on railroads in South Bend, Indiana. And then I seen that video and I was like, that's him walking across the bridge. And I'm like, instantly I knew him. I knew his hunch. I knew his nose, his hair. His, okay, his wait, I got to tell you something really quick, if you don't mind. I'm going to just stop you because this is really weird. Um, before we connected just now on the phone, I have a friend who I had met just through doing the podcast and she is a psychic. She actually finds missing people, but I wanted, I said, I'm going to send you two names and I want you to tell me what comes to your mind. And, um, and I didn't even get your, her name sent out to you, right. Or out to her. And these are the three words that she says to me or the four words. She says the word down. She says there is somehow there's a woman connection and she said South Bend. And when you just said that, that actually just gave me chills. So um, I want to go back. So you're yeah, right very, now. it does that to me too, because yeah, so, I, I'm very spiritual, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'd imagine so after like going through what you did, there is sort of probably a little awakening within you. Okay. Um, I want to ask you, so your son right now is 24 years old. But yeah. your father, Dennis, friends. he is um, passed away, right? Is yeah. he still living where your dad lived? I don't, I, I'm not sure. I got two sons that might okay. be involved. And what, my youngest, is, yeah, what is your youngest? What's his age? Gavin Gross, he's 19. And um, Dylan, Dylan Harmon you, is, is 24. You think your sons could be involved in that? You don't think it was something well, that your dad would have done on his own? I don't know because there's things within our family that I've found out through DNA and through who I've spoken to that I won't speak about because they was adopted and stuff. And he told me that his mom uh, came, that one of their two kids came from a rape and that she had to flee to New York, Rochester or something from my grandfather, Kenneth Sr., they came from Mormons and the Harmons turned it into something sicker. And so I got Roger Allen Jess that supposedly is in prison for my uncle's murder five days before I was born, Jeffrey Allen Harmon. And they tried breaking him out of prison like 10 commandos is going to blow up a hospital or a daycare and break this guy out. A big sting was done with the FBI. And he talked about syndication and organization, a syndicate. And I don't know if it's the Kingston family order that they talk about on uh, escaping polygamy. That's what my family came from. And okay. um, I just found a lot of this out. So Dennis and who he knew, you know, um, I, I don't know who, who, he knew, who he knows, but I don't want to piss anybody off either, you know. What was Dennis's wife's name and were they married up until he died? His fifth wife was Belinda that he uh, passed away in May. She was Belinda Harmon. She's from uh, down by Georgetown, Indiana, too. That she's still okay. at the house, I guess. But and she then what said day? She, what day did your da your father die? May thirteenth. Lucky number thirteen for him. Because two thousand twenty-one. Do you know what yeah. he passed away from? No, no one will tell okay. me anything. Okay. But it's odd that I've. Uh, like I was saying, I, I, I got off track and I'll do that, you know? Yeah, um, that's okay. I, I'm like a woman. I talk about 10 different things. That ain't a bad thing for all you yeah. politically correct. It's <laughs> just, I, I got more going on in my head. Hey, I'm AD. Most. I can keep up with you. It's okay. And so it's like, uh, um, I was scrolling down and I seen the video and I said, oh my God. And she said, that's a video I told you about after your dad called and told me to tell you not to have your mail come into the house because I liked, I, I didn't care. He took my son, moved away from me, got my son from the welfare with people. Uh, okay, wait, one book. second, Sean, who, who said that's the video I told you about? Was that Nancy? Nancy? Yeah, okay. She had now, seen it did she, did Nancy know your father? Mm -mm. No. Okay. No. 
Has he anybody talked, else? He, ta he talked to her one time on the phone telling her last summer whenever he found out that she wasn't just some person off the street. She's an adult. She just retired from LG&E. She has an establishment, a home, and, and talks. And he couldn't, he, she's a little smarter than some of these girls that he talked to when I dated in my yeah. 20s and 30s that he manipulated and coerced them to doing, them, doing things with them and their kids probably. Because he was, he was very manipulative. He was yeah. a disc jockey and ventriloquist and traveled everywhere. He was a military police officer. I didn't know that. And he was a sharpshooter. He worked for South Bend Railroad. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is my father walking across. And so I instantly called him and said, you mother. Blah, 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 and I'm calling the police. And so, so okay, I called the you FBI. told your dad that you were calling the police on him. I said, I'm coming after you, you son of a, you know, and I said, okay. I'm coming, buddy. And then what and did I he called, say to that? I just, I text him. I, I meant, okay. I, that's what I meant. To say. He never responded. He never said anything. Him. I didn't want to okay. talk to him at that point in time. I don't, I don't even know if I tried calling him because I, I text him whenever I, I was on Facebook and I didn't have time to call. I text him and said, I'm coming for you. You better watch out. You know what you did and all this uh, stuff, taking my son. And now I find this out. And the worst thing I ever did back then was smoke pot and you want to say that I'm a bad parent but like I said our, he had so much ties with VFW the Marine Corps leagues to corporations and doing weddings and parties and and satanic bull crap or whatever he's into you know because he's into something dark now, or Sean, he might just be a manipulator and and uses everybody to do these things and set them up I think yes my sons were involved I think the person at the CPS building was my son and somebody walked up to that car. I heard and, cause I've found all this out within six months now, you know, since February the 3rd and someone, the, the cops came down here and got a link to his Facebook and got everything he had at that point in time, hopefully before he, you know, deleted stuff. And, um, so I, I called the FBI in Carroll County and they just wouldn't call back and stuff. And so then he started posting on Facebook about, you know, like, I'm just on drugs. Here we go again. Sean's back to doing his thing, saying this and that, you know, uh, I got, I got him, you know, from his mom, you know, I don't know how he got me from my mom, but I do, you know, because he knew the main person at the welfare department and the judges and they all drank right there at the golden nugget in Richmond where he DJed every Thursday to Saturday. And then he would DJ at other parties and drive with me a hundred miles an hour back and forth. And I've said that he's burned cars. I believe he he's been doing this Ypsilanti murders and the alphabet murders because my grandfather, um, Kenneth Harmon senior, he, um, was from Sacramento, California at born there. And, moved to Sacramento or moved to Rochester, New York. And the person I found through my DNA that said his mom, you know, was raped by one of the Kenny brothers, Glenn, um, that my father and his brothers traveled to Sacramento and to Rochester where the alphabet murders also happened. And the Ypsilanti, Michigan murders, there's the pulling up over the shirt, over the head, things stuck into the women after they, or whenever, you know, and that the body placement and stuff, there's just so much stuff that I found out since Anthony Greeno's show and for them to shut down and talk about the next week after I give them 23,000 views, I'm not in it for the views, but I want my voice to be heard. And I wasn't as a kid saying he was this and that and a child molester. And, you know, because he was, uh, honorably discharged for you know um, a hernia operation or something he lied about that to get back on disability and, and get his pay higher he would do insurance jobs burn cars out in the backyard I was with him one time whenever he burned a car and I've talked to the law enforcement about that too about what I could be in trouble for being there you know so it's like I'm I'm honest with everything about my own self and on my YouTube videos and stuff, 
So he basically was like, uh, I'm just lying, you know, and he lied to my son the whole time of his life, telling him that me and my mom left, me and his mom, Christy Johnson, left him uh, in an alleyway. And so it's like Dylan, you know, I didn't get in touch with Dylan until not too long ago, whenever he admitted on text, I've got him so mad and I got other people mad within my family that let a little bit too much out about the Masons and about other things that Dylan said, okay, we was there. Cause I, I showed a side by side that I even gave you of Dylan in a pink shirt. And then I got him in a blue shirt and how he's standing his hair, how he looks like this out under his glasses and stuff. You know, I, I, I would know my own son, even though I ain't seen him in since 2013. That's the last time I've seen him face to face. And that was graduation. So sorry. I, I put That's a lot. Okay. I was trying to figure out how he died. It doesn't I know, really I don't know. say anything. It's, it's I would be like, it'd be interesting if he committed suicide. Well, that's I what someone else said, too, because I'm trying to get a lawyer for the probate of his property, too, because there's things within his estate that should be mine. And yeah. uh, I, I'm the one that's I'm, I wasn't a victim. I was a victim up until the point I found out I put I, I felt like a victim in life. And I was I most people ain't I, I might say, you know, I've had a hard life. Well, I've had a hard life. You know, I've lived through a serial killer's house. So whenever people come at me. I sometimes say things and do things on here that go against the norm, but I've been homeless for 13 years and I don't live by the standards of a cell phone, internet and doing day-to-day -day activities and having the comfort of your four walls and your door to lock at night. I didn't have that, you know, and people walking up on me out on the middle of the street and telling me who I am and that's why I'm like up in your face and stuff. Whenever you say something on the internet, I'm like, I'm on here text war screaming at the phone. And Nancy's like, Oh my God. You know? And and so yeah. I get kicked off of Facebook and stuff because I'm the, I'm not narcissistic. I'm um, passionate about it because my son's involved. I don't want my son to get the death penalty, but he should pay for if he truly participated willingly. I don't Can I, know. Let, let me ask you a few things, Sean. Yeah. Does anybody else in your family agree with you that the picture and the voice sounds like your father? Anybody that you know? Nobody would say they're okay, too afraid. Would. Okay. And then here's this other question would be, um, okay, probably because <laughs> of how you were raised and the trauma. I've had that other would. people. I've had, I've got other people that know that it's him that. I know from just that no Dennis, I know people okay. from my home. So maybe people that aren't related to you, people that aren't no, related, nobody but people that related knew will say nothing. Okay. But other people okay. that knew him will say, yes, yeah. that does sound and look yeah. like him. And then oh, I, you did mention something about, um, you saw the jacket that he was wearing, you know, that he had one of those. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's one of his signatures is the blue windbreaker, um, and scarf. And um, there, another thing I, I found was on 4490 Pleasure Ridge Road, Southeast in Corden, Indiana. If you go look at the cell of that property, you will see the hoodie he wore in the murders five years after the sale of that house. Because this was around 2013, the Evansdale time. He moves after uh, murders. He moved from... Um, Corden, Indiana at the 4490 uh, Pleasure Road, Road Southeast um, 47112, I think. And um, he moved from there after the Evansdale murders and he moved to Hunstonville, Kentucky at 1730 Liberty Loop Road. Yeah. And I don't know. I never lived there. I only remember the court in Edra. And then after the Delphi murders, he moved from Hunstonville, Kentucky, to his uh, residence he lived in until he died, which was on 6460 or 6490 um, Forest Grove uh, Northeast Road. And 
So that's like Richmond, Indiana. He moved after the Nikki McGowan. And she, I mean, I'm not saying that that one's him, but I mean, he, he posted stuff about Evansdale girls and he posted about his own murders and posted something on his Facebook about it and about the reward thing. You know how they showed the reward of 225,000. Let's get this guy out here. I just found this and all blah, blah, blah. He likes posting pictures of he took pictures of us when he kidnapped us i sent you pictures of black eyes that's when he took us to fairfax and stole my two older sisters and i don't remember if he stole my sister from my mom probably did do you know if they've tested his dna well i talked to indiana state police officer harper and i've got all the Oh, I, I like saying this so they know and so people know I do take pictures every time they block every time on the podcast and I, I keep pictures of whenever I call the police and FBI and, and he told me a week or so maybe a week and a half before he was cremated um, that he he this is how he said it. he said um, they was supposed to go down there and get it whether that means that they went down there and got it, they should have, because just the day before, Iowa finally called me back the next day after I called Evansdale, and it was in May. I waited a while to call other agencies and stuff until I got enough people, you know, to, to look at me and say, hey, we need to look at this guy, because no one ever listened to me as a kid, and for a long time on here, I thought, you know, it's going to be a hell of a job and it is, you know, but people don't understand what's going on with law enforcement. And I have a view of what's really going on with that, you know, and okay, no wait, one's so getting, Sean, oh, as far oh. as you know, they did not test his DNA. They said that they was going to get it. Okay. Now, but you don't I, know for sure if they did. Okay. Then did they test yours too? Because the only reason why I'm saying that is where they can link it to your dad. It won't be a direct hit with yours, but even if your dad's not here and he is cremated, have they taken yours? Um, I've linked mine up to the GED match database. Yeah. Okay. I've been talking okay. to uh, Roger Curtis or Curtis Rogers um, to um, put my link into the database. So they should have it, you know, whether, but see what you got to do is give your number to Carroll County and to all these other places. I put it out on some of my YouTube and Facebook. I don't care about putting out my, my, my pass. I didn't put out my passcode and stuff, but I put the link that if any organization wants to uh, download that to their database or their files to see if he might be linked, they should be able to do that now. It just seems like it would be so easy for them just to rule out your dad. Yeah. Like just test I mean, it and be let's let's move on. So I be done. You know, yeah. But and, uh, but whether but see we don't uh, we don't know also if his DNA is the one that's on there. Somebody could have okay. walked up and touched one of the girls when they found him. You know there could have been somebody touched their shirt. So we don't know what DNA they only have nine points or so and they need like 12 uh, points on a certain scale to huh segments. Segments? segments segments yeah so there's only so many segments that they they say that they have I don't know if that's true so yeah I don't know the logistics but there was a Rockney Harmon that dealt with the OJ case and the Golden State Killer in Sacramento maybe my father knows um the Golden State Killer guy, because they're about the same age, and my grandfather lived in Sacramento, and my dad went out there with his brothers, and there's alphabet murder killings of little kids with double letters like Abby, Libby, double B's, Collins, LL, Cook, OO. Then well, that would just kids. be a huge coincidence. Um, I also oh, want to ask yeah. you that that picture Sorry. that's in uh, you know the one that we see oh, with him. It, with the yeah, blue it cup. looks like he's got like a like is it a fanny pack? What do you think that is? Like underneath oh, his that's jacket. A, that's a the maroon shirt. If you look at the 4490 Pleasure Ridge Road Southeast cell of that house, he shows photos of inside the house, and you can see the hat. Um that he so wore that in the is a shirt it's not um, yeah i'm talking about the shirt pack. too in that room i'm talking about the room 
it, it's it's not a fanny pack. It's a maroon shirt that you will see in that um, room. You gotta. There's also lumps from that property out in this property where it looks like overturned dirt. And I've talked to Officer Chris Burke in um, Harrison County, Indiana. They won't call me back. Um, Harrison County, some dispatcher woman. And I, I'm being nice whenever I'm talking about her. She hangs up on me every time I call, except until I started telling them I'm I'm recording this, you know, but I wasn't recording. But I don't I, know don't if have I have a picture of that house, the 4490. You got to Google 4490 Pleasure okay. Ridge Road. Let me do that really quick while you're it's here. It's the realtor's sell of the house. In that house, you'll see the hoodie he was wearing the maroon shirt and if you zoom in on the shirt I've showed that there's blood all over that shirt he's been wearing those clothes for years and then I showed that picture of a kid there's a uh, there's a bigger wider picture of a guy at Connie Cope K-O-E-P-K-E -E, my aunt uh, Harmon Connie Cope Harmon um, that is his sister that lives in the Port Michigan City where Linda Weldy was murdered along railroad tracks in this hometown, the same town that my uncle Jeffrey Allen Harmon was murdered in the woods and was found in a blue coat. Roger Allen Jass talks about an organization. I've heard about an organization in with the Kingston family that I'm related to by DNA uh, GED match uh, database. And there's so much that I found out, you know, that I'm like, I don't know what the hell he's involved. It's called the order the Kingston's are, but Dennis could have become and went off branch. You know, um, the blue coat is there's a picture of him with a redheaded girl. Odd that Abby was a redhead. Um, Linda Weldy's house now is a VFW. Dennis is a member of VFW and Masons and Eagles and Druids. He's with everybody. He was he was in the Marines, so he used those things to help him DJ in another town and meet someone because when you're a DJ, you you're the life of the party. You're like um, the bartender, you know. She knows right. everybody in the bar. She's the smartest person. Well, a DJ like him, he would ventriloquist and would take the dummies head off and stuff to scare kids and stuff. Yeah, he was very methodical and. And he was very authoritative. So whenever I heard his voice, I was like, I hear him say, guys, go down a hill. Guys, yeah. go down a hill. Very affirmative. He's very, his, his level is very uh, strict and precise and then down. Like, okay, that's why. But I know yeah. what he's thinking. I know how he thinks. I lived with him. Um, I didn't turn into him. And he tried to mold me I think in the ways where at a young age I I was like no 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 at six and seven I should not be having sex and my sister shouldn't be messing with me and I've said all this because it's it gives back story to who he is and there's even farther back things of like he moved from up in LaPorte Michigan City he didn't live there at the time that my uncle was murdered that I think is my real father I'm trying to find those answers out. I want his, I want my DNA tested to Dennis's too, not just yeah. his put into the system because I want to know who my real father is because my mom was writing one of the brothers. Um, I heard something about a letter. I don't know. It could have been a letter that was before I was born, you know, but there was at some point she was writing a letter. It took a letter from one of my uh, dad's brothers. He had Kenny, Johnny, Terry, Bobby, Glenn, um Timmy and Jeffrey and then Connie but there's another whole 20 other kids that my grandfather had in P Catania in Pennsylvania they have things to do with railroad tracks there's historical sites you know every I think what it was I think what was happening is there's drugs involved I think that he saw an opportunity that he he's from around that area, I mean, he grew up 15 miles away in Elston and then Calston and then in Delphi uh, is right there. And then he supposedly took a horse named Spirit to Brookston, Indiana at the equestrian um, horse uh, thing for autistic kids. Um, my son's a horse, Spirit. And 
I've had other people tell me about a Savannah. A Savannah got a hold of me and said months before the uh, Delphi murders that her friend had told her after the fact, after the mur murders, that Dennis had approached her and asked him, asked her kind of like the Ted Bundy thing, can you help me put a kayak up on top of the um, roof as a vehicle, just as a, a woman from Tennessee also said that she thinks that that was Dennis too. She, she just can't tell, but she said it looks like him. And then another woman from Detroit told me from back in the 60s and 70s when he was up there doing his thing that there was a guy that looks a lot like who I put of the side by side of Dennis with the Ypsilanti murder. Uh, they didn't have good sketch artists, I guess, back then, but they got Picasso and stuff. I don't see why, <laughs> you know, but it's like I got the same coat that he's in, the blue coat, the scarf, and in the 4490 uh, Pleasure Ridge Roadhouse. It's got the hat he wore, the second hat with the, the bill that's bent. That's a bent bill. It ain't. They, they did a whole show on Anthony Greeno. You can knock this out. I think he's a ho-ho green giant. I don't like him. I used him for what he used me, but he's a fake. All of them are fake, and anybody that makes money off these two girls ticks me off because in the same tone that they're saying Abby and Libby are these other boy, people's names, and I come on there politely and say, hey, this is my dad. This is my son. This is what I got. They block me. You can't see my text on the live chat or nothing. And it's like that. Then Gray Hughes, I go on there and I call in. And I, I was trying to tell him about my dad's phone. My dad posted on one of his Facebook pages or on his Facebook page that I seen right around February when I found this out that his on the February the 15th, he posts. Can you guys send me your contact information? My phone got wet. The battery got wet. Wonder why the fuck it got battery wet. Stupid. You didn't know that they had you on video. And yeah. plus, he, and he that takes he, the body. They, they still had the phones with them. Oh, yeah. They, that, they, they went somewhere else. I know for a fact there has to be. Because there, there's also a, a, a video of a news that zooms in at a trailer, a truck, a trailer, and a horse trailer on the end. For some reason, they show things. Just like through the news feed, you can see at the trail walk where they was going to go search. My son is there. If you see, you can see him sitting there talking to some girl. And I'm, I, 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 my son said, yeah, we was there. We did it. Who am I going to kill next? And I'm like, got him. And then within a week or so, that's when Dennis went to the hospital and then he died another week or two after that. And Dylan cut off his, defriended me from Facebook. Maybe Dennis was like, you stupid mother, you know, why did you tell him that? You know, that's what I okay. think. Sean, what do you think? What, what, if you could prove this was your dad, what will you get out of that? Well, um, the main thing I want to get is for the families, you know, I mean, that's it. That okay. that's what bothers me is that he done uh, seeing that video and him walk across that bridge and know what he's going to do afterwards was like, man, it's like your whole world is like, Oh my God. Now I know why my world was so bad. It wasn't in my head. This is why I was homeless. This is why my son was not with me, but what I'm going to get is not, I don't care about the reward. That was the fifth thing on my mind. You know, the first thing is uh, the families and finding out who my dad is. Second, third is my son. And really second or third is my son. It's just my son's being a little bastard right now, you know, and he's, he's, he needs to grow up, you know, because he knows what happened and he's the only one that can tell what happened. And he, is the second composite sketch and the reason why in the uh anniversary when they switched it up and doug carter says um okay you never thought that we would turn in this direction what they was doing there was no one would come out and say i guess because i was homeless if i would have known four years ago you know i was homeless yeah. not too far from where dennis was and he could have right. come and got got to me too he knew where i slept yeah. and i didn't even know that and so it's like Dylan 
you know, is right now the main suspect. And they was doing that to make Dylan say, hey, that ain't me. I didn't do it. That was grandpa. Grandpa, are you going to let them do this to me? You know, they're they're psychologically screwing. And people are so, I don't like to call them ignorant, but you, you got to know what you're messing with, with Dennis and with this kind of a serial killer. He's a serial killer. They talk about in a roundabout way about everything. I listen very closely to Doug Carter in any roadshow Delphi any news, any updates, any, and they talk about me in comment, but they said, this is not the platform to, uh, to answer about Sean Harmon. It's the only person they ain't talking about. Chadwell, they're just letting people, the only reason they do that every so often, I believe, is because they're trying to just put smoke out there to be like, okay, we don't think it's Dennis, you know, just to throw, you know, but now that he's gone, why ain't they at least saying, hey, we, we've we named him? You know, it don't take that long to do this. I mean, yeah. I did it in May. I've, I've had my DNA in Ancestry in, in what, GED in May or June, early June? Yeah, May. right. Around, well, May, yeah, because mine was in May. I just got mine, and I said they need to get his because he's dead. And yeah. so in the state police, Harper said, well, they were supposed to go down. And I, I've talked to him since then, and I said, did they go down and get it? And, and I'm not getting no answers, you know, you know, I'm not. Okay, so Sean, said, let's, if yeah. let's just say they were able to get a hundred percent match and it wasn't your father, are you willing to say, okay, I made a mistake or are you still going to believe that it was your father? Well, uh, they, what the thing about it is, is the person on that bridge and that voice is my father. Okay. I didn't. I have never said that he is the killer, other than that Doug Carter and them says the man on the voice and the person that you hear is the one that killed the girls. Yeah. They've never said they. And then they've said it could be a in between the both of them, Dylan and and the composite and the first sketch and the second sketch. I've seen three sketches. There's another sketch that I've seen out there. And that's what makes me think that my other son is involved, unless somebody just blew okay. up the original screen. But both yeah. of my sons look very much alike. And my son fr from Colorado, I believe, they also went out there to maybe talk to Daniel Nations or throw it off to make it look like it. But I think they've talked to my youngest son. Okay. I think they know who, very much who Dennis is. It's just there's other people involved. Because why okay. was the um, McCain's out there? Why? did they direct it from a different distance? Why, if there was a fight underneath the bridge, that could have been Dennis yelling at the girls and the girls get down and, and whatever. Yeah. Why can't they just go show the photo of my dad and my son and say to the people that they got that sitting in the car, the dog lady, the, the flannel shirt guy, the Ron Logan, uh, Anthony Greeno, I heard was out there too. Um, one Anthony Greeno or or Gray Hughes knows Dennis from what I've heard. Dennis frequents up there. He knows people. Linda Weldy's house now is a a a VFW, like I said. Abby Williams lived somewhere down there, I guess, close to the trail uh, or or to the to Ron Logan's down there. Do that? Does she live close to down by there where they could cook dope? Maybe they want the property. Maybe it was partly dope. Maybe it was that somebody also snitched, and it was a perfect time to throw them off. You know, I believe okay. that whenever he got them down over the hill, one of the girls said, "Fuck this, I'm running," and let's go, Abby. And they take off. He grabs one of them. He has to go into the water after them. He walks them across. His phone gets wet. He uses one of their phones that, or they won't let him use the phone. So they're driving around trying to. But I believe he went somewhere else, killed him to abandon him. CPS building is where I believe. I don't know. I don't know okay. if it's CPS building, but if they drove around town, then maybe they went somewhere else and he threw it so off. You don't think they were just killed right then and there? No. I okay. don't. I don't think so. I mean, I got. But I don't know because you they don't give out a whole lot of yeah. information on that now what i've heard um about, because did, is it the reason why you think that is because they searched and there was nothing there and then all of a sudden they're there 
Is that why you There's think? There's a couple different uh, avenues on that. There's the avenue of I've heard the phone pinging all over town. You know, maybe he took them out to to do stuff or or have somebody ride around with the the phone. Maybe they left the phone in the vehicle and they they killed and then or or they had the phone and then uh, maybe he killed the girls and then. Are you talking like, about his phone or the girl's phone? The girl's his phone. Now I thought oh. both girls had a phone, but they only found one of them. Okay, and true? it did show that it was pinging all over. I didn't hear that part. I've heard that okay. they, they've talked about it, you know, okay. um, that the phone had pinged and then it got shut off at some point. Um, but at about five or so o'clock, it got shut off. They said uh, uh, the, the Germans and stuff, um, Patty, Becky, Be Becky, Patty Maynard. And um, I guess, you know, uh, there was something to do with... Um, drugs and someone snitching you know uh, whoever that was i think the father or something or one of the girls or somebody you know just like the evansdale they was killed about drugs and uh they thought you know that one of the uncles because he was i guess he, he's doing 90 years in prison for drugs because he eventually got in trouble for it but you know um I guess, you know, somebody snitched in Delphi. They sure did get rid of um, the fire chief because of the flora. My father used to burn cars. He came and got me the time that Swain Robinson in Richmond, the old um, historical foundry, got caught on fire. I don't know if he works for the cities or for some organization that just wants to do this for the greater good of the community to bring money for the historical trails. And maybe the fast speed railway from um, New York to uh, California to Michigan on down to Florida. Um, I believe that there's that connection too. I, I believe there's more things that are involved here than what people will ever know because the FBI is probably looking at other people if there's other people involved. I believe though, if the girls were killed there. He knew that he had gotten caught on phone. He had the phone, was going around trying to get it unlocked or had the girls and telling them to unlock this motherfucker right now or I'm sure you'll block that out. I, I, I mm -hmm. leave it for content. But um, that they was, if, if they was truly found, the way I heard is that someone said that there was a letter K that was carved either into one of the girl's chest or the tree. And this is somebody that says they're close to the family that I think lived in Ohio, if I remember right. I don't know who it is, but they had per they asked just the right questions. And I don't talk to too many people about certain things. I know I put everything out there, but I do that. So you guys know the truth and there are no lies. And if they are covering it up or if Dennis was going to kill Dylan after I found out and came out about it or if he was going to go killing someone else or even try to downgrade me and make me look like he tried to do, but people shut him down. It was like, why, why ain't he admitting he didn't do it? Why did he die on the 13th? Evansdale on the 13th, you know, 7-13-2012, reverse that number 2-13-2017 to Delphi number 32 you know that's funny you're like me i have a thing with numbers and i think there's a lot of um really weird coincidences there's a lot which of also stuff yeah so i think um what happens with you and i think you're just trying to get your voice heard but because of the way you're going about it it's actually maybe freaking people out or they're not taking you seriously because of it but i know that you're passionate and that's why you're doing it um well, the and i also Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. The right people that need to know is all I care about, really. Yeah. I do these shows for for your pleasure and your pain half the time because I don't care what anybody other than the police say. That's and yeah. I'm not saying that to you. I'm not saying that to anybody. I'm saying I don't care what anybody thinks about me or how I come about doing it because I had to do it the way I had to do it. If people, whenever they find out who my father is and what he he did 
and the things that he's done. You know, the funny thing is, Sean, I think because um, you're because of your history of being an ex addict and being homeless and all these things, I think people are trying to discredit you. And because. I think because That's where of the, the most credit would come from, I think. Right, I, I know, and it's weird because homeless, you know. Right. Okay. Exactly my point. Like I think what happened is when you were really young, you were traumatized, obviously, and then when you saw that picture of that guy, it brought all this emotion back to you because oh, you yeah. recognized him, and so that's what I got earlier when I was talking to you. And and even though you may not have the education behind you, I think you're very intelligent. I think you're very. Um, uh oh god what's the right word where you um you have really good instincts when it comes to certain things and i also yeah I, insight and i yeah intuitive that's the exact word i was thinking of um but i i wouldn't i be. mean i don't know you well but i don't think to me you don't seem like a manipulative type of person or maybe no. you had been in the maybe in the past but i don't you don't come across that way to me at all um, and I think we're all probably a little narcissi- narcissistic when they were telling you that's what you were. I think we all are a little bit, but I think um, I think you. We just what? need to we need Tom's to present it in a way where people will listen. Is what I. That's why my do. YouTube videos. Um, yeah. That I put out talking about all the evidence that I have and about my thoughts about Dennis and his past. That's why on YouTube I'm plugging my phone in. It's going to die if I don't. Um, I have tons of posts on YouTube, like over 80 or so of where I talk about the case, talk about my childhood, talk about places he's been, things he's done, people that will be worth looking at into, um, you know, and my, um, you know, some of the things that people like, there's one video of me saying, help, I'm in the basement somebody please come give me a light i got a cigarette but i ain't got a light i'm down in the basement i'm hogtied and kelsey german and all and and it was her that made the video and i have i've been in touch with becky maynard patty i've contacted her and text her she won't tell me nothing which i understand that but i wanted her to know why i was doing this and that the $325,000, I don't give a shit about. I don't care about that money. You can make a statue of the two girls looking back and waving. It, it touches me on what I want to do. I've already talked to, to people about doing books and, and doing, you know, other things, you know. And, and if I ever have benefit or something, I'd have certain people involved. You know, I've contacted Kim Kardashian. I wrote her this week. I've. I've done a lot of things that people don't know. I've done 72 hours of nonstop. I'm not allowed to text right now on Facebook or Messenger. I've either over text or over posted because I'm doing this 24 seven. I'm not on here to um, get back at my son and dad, you know, because of a bad childhood. I'm doing it because of the two girls. And whenever I see their family's face and I just, I hate thinking about it because it's my family and who am I? sit here and say i care about them girls because you know i don't want to get into hey, it sean let me explain anyway, something yeah, to okay. you really quick stop, stop. Um, so <laughs> i have this crying. funny thing about um i like numbers right like i always look for connections with numbers and all of this stuff and i was like i always try to add everything up to the number eight because i love the number eight and i'm like oh well, you know if it's like a three it's okay because it's an eight cut in half and there's a three right so when i start talking like this it makes so much sense to me but then when other people hear me they're just like oh my gosh She's crazy, whatever. Right. Except, and then when other people do it, they start talking about their weird numbers. And I look at them going, oh my God, is that the way I sound? Now, Nancy, tell me if you agree with this. When he posts all of these things and he's so out there and in people's faces, it almost takes that, um, the, the, the importance of it out because he doesn't seem credible. Does that make sense? To well, either one of you. it it it's okay sean is first of all is this okay for me to answer and talk yeah okay um well i just this is your thing so i know here's your thing about ours, and i, and I want to hear what you have to say i think it's important okay, okay. but here's the thing about sean 
from the very moment that, that he came to me to tell me, I, this is my dad, this story has not changed. This, nothing has changed. He has worked tirelessly to try to have somebody listen and to somebody and, and to, to prove this or to at least listen to him and, and, and give him some sort of um, Stage. affirmations. <laughs> He's not in this for anything, but just like he said, for these girls and these families, He's worked so hard for this, uh, and this is this is all he thinks about. Uh, he is completely credible. He's he is perfectly uh, one of the best people I've ever met. And I mean, I wouldn't have brought him into my home had I not made friends with a man I thought was um, a really good person. There's a light in him. He's a great guy, and uh, we've been friends a long time now. Uh, one of the one of the most honest people you're going to meet. Uh, sometimes you might not want to listen to what he's got to say, but he truly is. So his credibility, uh, the way I see it, and we've talked about this before. Why? Uh, why is it that a homeless person or an addict can't be credible? Uh, even no, if I totally were, agree with you with that. I yeah, just feel I mean, like, you can be bad. Yes, you can. You could be batshit crazy, but you're going to know your father and his voice. Yeah, you're going to know. Things. I agree with you. Yes. I used to go to school and tell people that's my dad. Now it's like, now I find this out and I'm like, the man I used to admire. Yeah. After a while, at the, at a, that was up until about six years old when I started getting smart about stuff and not wanting to be touched and stuff at 10 years old by my sister. I was the one that stopped things because you know, I, I was smart enough to know. I was molested by a teacher at 13 in Richmond, Indiana. Dennis hunched me one time whenever I was 14. I think he come home drunk because um, he was an alcoholic in them days. You know, he I don't know if he still was when he died. Thank God I found out, you know, uh, in February that uh, he had done this before he passed in and, you know, the, the families may never have known. But I, I like I was getting at, I don't care about nobody other than the police. The police know it's him. I've talked to the police. I've talked to them. I've, I've, I got answers about certain things. They don't get time to really answer any of the questions because I don't ask too much, and I probably should. You guys just want to block the truth. You don't want the truth. If you say you want the truth, you're going to make money off of it, and it pisses me off because you're saying these girls' names, and they aren't even my kids, and I'm giving it my kid. And to the police and saying, this is my son, not because I hate my son. I love my son to death. And I fought to get my son. And my dad had the welfare lady, Koblenz, that was the main person that got me from my mom and then came back into the picture whenever he was in Florida, um, you know, in the 80s, whenever we lived down there. And uh, my stepsister uh, was molested and um, they blamed it on uh the other grandfather that molested his wife, Dennis's wife, Shirley, his third wife, sorry. And it's like he had this welfare lady that got him out of stuff in another state. She lived in Indiana. Why in Florida are they calling the welfare department up there and him getting out of shit? You know, I'm like, you know, my credibility on 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 the drugs and stuff, you know, uh, I'm, I'm honest about even being on heroin, you know, and. I started uh, drinking at the age of three or four, you know, and I remember the trailer being caught on fire at three and could he have set that on fire? Like I said, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of questions and, and unanswered uh, questions that I have and that other people have in other families. And it kills me to, to even see these podcasts or any HLN of Becky Patty and, and Ann Williams and uh, Carrie Timmons, you know, and then I've seen the, the grandfather this week crying and saying that, you know, uh, sorry, I'm trying to not cry um, uh, about watching Andy Griffith show. Sorry. And then the Linda Weldy girl, her family said she liked more commending my some of my favorite shows, you know, and so 
my passion is is a lot more, and that's why whenever I come off with people, the people that truly need to know know, and the people that are following me, I have almost four thousand uh, followers, you know, on my Facebook, you know. So I know my story's out there. I know I'm being heard. I know that the police know it's him. You you said about um, something asked uh, about if it isn't him. Well, if it isn't him, then they lied on their uh, news press conference saying that. You know, the, the time they said, we know this is about power to you. Do you have a little bit of decency or, or a little bit of um, what is that? Uh, we think you have just a little bit of compassion or sympathy or something like that. And that was uh, saying, I think, are you going to let your son be the, the main suspect and let him go down now and be whenever they came out with a different sketch? To throw that that wasn't for everybody to see just like the year anniversary i'm sorry if i'm going off if you want me to stop i will it's okay um but the year anniversary when i seen that that's whenever it really hit home about you know him whenever he he does that year anniversary out there and they do it out there along the trail where they had walked i could i don't know if i've ever been there to the Monon as a young, young kid. Never been there as an adult. If I was there as a kid, I don't know, but I'm afraid of fucking heights. So we don't know if one of the girls was thrown off the bridge. I think there's two different phones of the pictures. I think there's two different phones because of the pixels. The picture of Abby walking across, I zoom in and I see dirt on her face. How do we know she wasn't posed? How do we know anything? really, but I can only go on my certain speculations on every area. If if you look at, okay, there's other people out there, this is an organized hit, like I said, where, you know, it's done because of the drugs, it's done because they need money for the Monon to refix it, bring money to the city because, you know, a historical site for railroad, for trail, for to go out on the bridge, bring money for tourism, bring uh, money to the town, you know, revenue, um, bring more people to move to the city of Delphi. Hey, everything is possible, right? Um, Yeah. So we don't know what happened after that bridge. We don't know. um, And we can only speculate. and, And I can go on. I know how he thinks. And that's why whenever I come out and I, I am so, adamant about things and i'm like hey don't you come on here and 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 try to um dilute anything i say because of anything and try to discredit me or go against uh my knowledge of what i know and and try to you know make me look stupid or something it it, it ticks me off because people all the time are like why would you do that to your son well why wouldn't you are you worried at all that for somebody coming after you if you keep no, do, uh, keep this up nah, at all? No. Nah. I mean, the only thing I, I want from the cops is is because they said, you know, we can protect you, you know, and, and I was going to get into their, uh, their uh, press releases and their year anniversary. You know, he, he, he puts his hand down and he's like, he's trying to shake out of his head, but he's also well well knowledge and well uh, coerced or or verse too, you know, into saying what he's going to say at the press releases. He says it for the right person. They don't say something for no reason. He he knows what he's saying. He watches how he says it. He does certain things for the family too. It's a little showboating, but hey, he's trying to get into the head of a killer. The only person that knows the head of that killer better than the killer himself and what the law enforcement say they know, which I think they know a lot more about him because of the signatures and the things done at the crime scene, that he's posed the bodies, he's carved something, a K, whether that means Kingston family, Katanning, Kenny Harmon, Katie, uh, whoever the K means, you know, Katanning, Pennsylvania, where my family grew up. Uh, Kokomo gang, something else to throw them off. I don't know, you know, and, and I hear Doug Carter say, you know, we know this is about power. Yeah, he is. 
And how does he know that? Because of probably what's on that video. I believe there's more on that video that we don't want to know. And I, I get so pissed because people say, well, they need to release more. They need to release more. No, they don't. They don't need to release anything except to the one person in that one puzzle piece. And that's me. And whenever he was talking at that conference and says, there's somebody out there that knows who this is. Somebody from the neck down, you would know by their walk, by their mannerism, by their, their voice, somebody knows. Nobody would say anything. I don't even know if people put it together because he moved, because anybody that knows him should have been known, but in, until the people that I know that says, hey, I remember that. Now I, oh my God, you know, and I got texts from people. I'm not going to put them out there because I'm not going to do that to her. I put one or two out of other people that's talked to Dennis, you know, um, you know, Nancy said that she talked to him and that's when she felt the coldness of him and she didn't understand why my mom and them just left me, you know, with this man. And she wants to ask her why and all this. And I got answer questions and, and stuff I want to uh, give to my son. And I got questions from my family and my mom. I don't really give a shit about the Harmon side because they're all a bunch of pieces of shits anyway. They're the ones that caused this. They're the ones that Connie Harmon my dad would go up there, I heard, to see, and someone told me about him going up there to visit her, and he'd go by Delphi. Who this person is, I don't remember who it is. And then Dylan has kids that I don't even know are a kid, and I'm not named on one of the obituaries, but I don't give a shit. I don't care about that. You know, I don't, I, I, I expected that at the time, but I went and seen him. He is dead. I hope he was dead. I didn't touch him. I just looked at him, went like, thank God. Walked out, seen uh, Belinda, his fifth wife's um, mom. I said, tell Belinda I'm sorry for everything, you know, and I think they know what it is. And, you know, um, I talked to Dylan, uh, you know, um, a couple months before that on video chat. He looked like he was swelled up in the face, like someone had beat him in the face. I don't know if Dennis beat him. I know Dennis... Um, forced him to do something that he didn't want to do because if Dennis was doing this prior, we know who the main culprit and enforcer is of whatever. And that's what they call the the person in the Kingston family, the order on the polygamist on you on a uh, lifetime channel, uh, escaping polygamy. I think it's in its fourth season. I, I haven't even hardly watched, but they talk about, you know, being a white race, uh, they, we are uh, direct descendants of Jesus Christ's bloodline. That's what they believe. They believe this, you know, and, and my family goes back very far with Masons and in other countries, you know. Um, and so the Harmane, Harmon, Harmon, uh, you know, um, we have, you know, ties with, with certain uh, people in military. My dad was in military. I have elders uh in the family um generations before that were um military rockney Harmon um dealt with the delphi case why is there a Harmon involved in the case in the beginning um rockney p Harmon. he worked on the um golden state killer the oj case and uh, many others in linking um dna um uh what is that dna what does rockney do linking the dna familiar DNA and Indiana, I guess, don't do familiar DNA. I wasn't cutting you off like in a video. See, if you go to YouTube, Dennis Ross Harmon, um, you'll see and hear his voice. Sounds just okay. like Delphi. Okay. So, go well, listen, Den I'm going to have to wrap up here shortly. Um, I do want to keep your number in case that we can connect again. We are not doing this to make money. We do it. Um, at first we did it because we were, um, bored at home with COVID and we love yeah. true crime and that's how it kind of started. And then um, we are focused on some local cases here that we feel like we could help try to solve. And then I saw your message on ours. I was like, okay, let's go with this. Let's see where it takes I us. I went anywhere so, I could. Yeah. And I know, and we're ready. I'm here to listen to you. I well, mean, I think you've got some very valid on. points. Were you talking about this before or after he died? Did you find out before oh, or after? I, I, I've been talking about it since uh, day one on Facebook. Okay, but I day one of, of what year? 3rd. 
of which year? February 3rd of this year. Okay. Uh, about six months ago, seven months ago. Okay. So, and then he died in May. So I, I'd be curious of what that was all about. So, um, yeah, I came out I, before this, okay. like I said, I called I, him and then I posted every day after that and called law enforcement and, uh, emailed everyone, you know, from yeah. news stations and, and they was told not to, uh, do any shows about me. So why they was told that, you know, they're trying to do a media lockdown months before they even did a Delphi blackout on media last week or the week before, I guess. I just want to say, I really appreciate the fact that you um, um, brought up about credibility because, yes. because so many people have discounted him and I, I for, for reasons that don't even make sense to me. And so for you, as far as I know, you're one of the first ones that have even brought up that credibility issue and um, have given at least um, some substance to his uh, his being, be, you know, being on being homeless and uh, the addiction problems. They don't matter in something like right. this. They well, really I agree. Don't. We do. We've done a, a few cases in the past where the girls have been um, addicts and it doesn't matter. They are still somebody's sister, somebody's, you know, daughter or, you know, it, it doesn't matter to us right. that happens. But I do believe that um, I feel and I know that you believe this, too. Um, I believe that he believes that his father is this person. Yes. And yes. I think getting the story out and getting it told in the way that people will listen. Um, I think if we can help him in that sort, we will. And, uh, and I, I mean, I think he's very passionate about this and I think he just wants to be heard. And yeah. I think by being heard the way he's doing it actually makes him sound a little like cuckoo. But with that said, I believe that he believes it. And so I'm not, I'm not judging him. I'm, I can't judge anybody. You know, I'm not here to do that. I'm here to tell the story and I want to help him do that. So, yes. I, I just wanted yeah. to say thank you. I really didn't yeah, want this welcome. on here, but yeah. I just wanted to personally thank you because I, like I said, you're one of the first ones that I've even, that's even broached that subject that I've heard. Yeah, and okay. um, for Sean, I just, I feel like it's really important that somebody recognize him as, as a, as a person who, who is credible in this regard. I, yeah. I can be serious at some time. He can be serious at some time. He's yeah. really, it's just, he really I got an offset, you know, because there's uh, Wilford Wong. If you go and look at that YouTube of him um, talking about Satanism, that's basically what I went is SRA is satanical ritual abuse. And what a person like that has to go through and they offset things with joking or acting out yeah. or doing things because that's how I had to live through his yeah. house. That's how you cope. He, yeah. I mean, you got to cope somehow. And so it makes yeah. you feel like you're crazy. And I still feel crazy at times because I'm like, why ain't something being done? And it drives me batshit crazy. But bat Sean, crazy. you, you were just a product of your childhood. Your foundation was not built on a steady ground. And so no wonder, like if, if your father was this terrible person, no wonder you went through what you did until you yeah. are right where you are right now, which makes more I sense of why way. he could be a killer. Like he could be a serial killer. Like, yeah. let's just get the story out and let me help you. Yeah. And I'll be in contact with you. And if I have questions along the way, I'm going to definitely reach out to you, but um, I will be posting this tomorrow and I will send you a link. So thank I want to thank you and Nancy. You're welcome. All right, Sean, you, you have a good care. night. Okay. All right. You, you too. too. Bye-bye. Let today be the day. All right. Yes. Bye-bye.